All right, today I'm going to read the ending of Kate D. Camillo's um, Louisiana's Way Home for Mrs. Nolan's fifth grade. Two chapters. We'll finish it today, and um, I hope you enjoy it. We all went to the carnival. Me and Burke and and Betty Allen, and the father Burke, and the grandfather Burke. And I still had not made up my mind whether I would stay or whether I would leave. I just could not decide. But the good news is that the world-famous Betty Allen cake raffle was set up on the lawn in front of the Lost Shepherd Church. The cakes were arranged end-to-end -end on a long table, and they were beautiful to behold. There was a large glass fishbowl on the table, too. And every time somebody bought a raffle ticket, Betty Allen ripped the ticket in half and put one half of it into a bowl and handed the other half back to the person who who wanted to win the cake. The piano had been rolled out from the social hall and Miss Lulu was playing what she must have thought was an appropriate cake raffling song. It occurred to me that no matter what I did, I just could not escape Miss Lulu and her attempts at making music. It cost a dollar for every ticket and Burke Allen and the grandfather gave me five dollars so I could purchase five tickets because I really, really wanted to win a cake. I would buy you all them cakes, Doodlebug, said Grandfather Burke. I would buy you every last one of them. You don't even got to throw your tiny hat into the ring. All you got to do is say the word, and I will buy them all up for you. But I wanted to enter the raffle. I wanted to throw my tiny hat into the ring. I wanted to take my chances. Miss Lulu continued to play music, pounding away at what sounded to me like a cake raffle dirge, until the tickets were all sold, and then Biddy Allen said, We have 17 cakes, and ladies and gentlemen, and I will call 17 winning numbers. People applauded, and I clapped too, and then I looked down at my tickets. Were they winning tickets? I could not tell. I studied them very carefully. Betty Allen cleared her throat. Miss Lulu played a dramatic piano role. Betty Allen said, The first winner is 256. Well... I did not have ticket number 256. I went through my five tickets several times just to make sure. A very large lady in a purple dress shouted, That's me! That's me! I have won a cake! And she moved up to the table to select her cake while Miss Lulu played another dramatic role on the piano, and everybody applauded. And then we started all over again. Betty Allen put her hand into the fishbowl. Miss Lulu played some piano, and then Betty Allen pulled out a ticket and called out a number. And it was not my number. And pretty soon we had made it through almost all of the cakes. There was just one left, and it was the pineapple upside down cake. And even though I would have been very happy to win it, I have to say that the pineapple rings on the top of it seemed a tiny bit des desperate. There was something very sad about pineapple rings. I looked up at Grandfather Burke, and he was studying me with a serious look on his face. And then I looked over at Betty Allen, and she was holding the bowl with the numbers in it, and she was watching me too. I smiled at Betty Allen, and she smiled back at me. The light was shining off the fishbowl in a very beautiful way. Betty Allen put the bowl back on the table, and she reached her hand in, and she pulled out the last ticket. She did not take her eyes off of me once, and I thought, I've won. I've won the last cake. The fishbowl was all lit up with numbers and light. It was really a beautiful fishbowl. And then I remembered the little glass bowls that Betty Allen had used for the ice cream sundaes. And I remembered sitting in the glass top table with all of the Allens. And I remembered Grandfather Burke sliding his bowl over to me and saying, That's for you, Doodlebug. Take what is offered to you. And I knew what I wanted to do. I knew who I wanted to be. I wanted to be the person who sat at that table. I wanted to stay. Betty Allen cleared her throat. She called out the last winning number, and guess what? It was not my number. I did not win a cake, but I did not care. I was staying. And so I here I am, Granny, almost at the end of the story. Imagine my, how surprised I am to find that you are the one I'm writing it for. So now we find out that at the beginning she said she wanted to write this to keep a record of what had happened to her, and now we find out at the end she's decided that she's writing this all to Granny. Who knows if Granny will ever get it, but she's writing to Granny. And so I here I am, Granny, almost at the end of the story. Imagine how surprised I am to find that you are the one I'm writing it for. And speaking of surprise, you will not be surprised to learn that Reverend Obertask is better at dealing with telephone operators than I am. I stood beside him in his office at the Good Shepherd Church while he talked into the, all, to all the wrong clerks and then to the right clerk, Ramey's mother. And then finally, Reverend Obertas said, Hello, Ramey Clark, there is someone here who needs to speak to you. And he handed the phone to me. And the very first thing Ramey said to me was that Archie was there with her. She said he showed up at the back door and he yowled until they let him in and he had stayed there and he wasn't, hasn't left the house at all. And Ramey believed that I would show up again too. 
When are you coming back? said Raimi. I had to tell her that you were gone, Granny, and that you were not my Granny to begin with, and that you picked me up in the alley, and that my parents were not the flying elephantes, and that my real parents were unknown to me, and that I was not, after all, afraid of heights. I told her everything. And then I had to tell her I was staying in Georgia. What do you mean staying, said Raimi. I mean, I'm going to live here with the Allen family. But what about us, said Raimi. I started to cry then. The sun was shining into Reverend Obertas's office. It was lighting up his walrus whiskers and his perpetually joyous dust motes. And a long way away in Florida, Raimi was crying too, and I could hear her. Reverend Obertas cleared his throat, and he said, you know, people in Florida visit people in Georgia quite frequently. I took a deep breath. I said to Raimi, you could come and see me. All of you could come and see me. I'm only one state away. And they came to visit the, a week later. Mrs. Clark drove Ramey and Beverly and Buddy and Archie over the Florida-Georgia state line. She said that it was like being in charge of a traveling circus to have all of them in one car, but they came. And Burke Allen and Betty Allen and I have gone to visit Beverly and Ramey and Buddy in Florida. Archie, the king of cats, goes back and forth. Sometimes he stays with me, and sometimes he stays with Ramey because he's a cat and he does what he wants to do. Clarence the Crow is starting to trust me. He comes when I whistle. He has not yet landed upon my shoulder, but he will, Granny. He will. I have respected your wishes. I have not come searching for you. But I have crossed the Florida-Georgia state line many, many times since we last spoke. And I look for you every time I cross over. I know that you will not be there. But I look anyway. And I dream about you. And in my dream, you are standing in front of the vending machine from the good night sleep tight, and you are smiling at me, using all of your teeth, and you say, Select anything you want, darling. Provisions have been made. Provisions have been made. I'm so happy when you show up in my dreams and say those words to me. Thank you for picking me up in the alley of the Louisiana Five and Dime. Thank you for teaching me to sing. I don't know if you made it to Elf Ear or not, but I want you to know that there is no curse of sundering upon my head. I love you, Granny. I forgive you. And that is the end of our story. Um, we will be starting a new story. I'm going to start a new story, but it's going to be a story with um, third grade through fifth grade. So that will mean we are not going to go ahead and start Beverly right here. However, when we get back to school... I will start that with you guys and we'll do our best to get through it. But um, right now, I'm going to just do one chapter book with the third through fifth graders. Um, hopefully, I can start that tomorrow. No, I'll start it on Thursday. So um, enjoy the end of this one. I hope you did. And um, you can always check out Beverly right here from the library if you want to when the libraries reopen. Um, but we will start a new book that I think you're really going to like. Um, and we'll start that on Thursday. So enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. <laughs>